I'm sure you know how to make a siphon. It's fairly simple. You get a tank of water, put a hose pipe into it, then you suck on the end of this hope so the water goes up and over, and if you're lucky, out. And it should keep flowing as long as there's no air leak that gets into it. It should flow until the top tank is empty. But what a mess! It can go everywhere and you can have several false starts, and you may not much like the taste of what you're siphoning. So there has to be a better way, and indeed there is. There's several better ways, and they're known as self-starting siphons. They're very interesting. Some of them are very simple. That one, for example, is a self-starting siphon. It's just a kink of tube, glass tubing. If I put my finger on the end here and lower the, lower the first leg into this tank of water, notice that the water level comes right up to the edge of the tank. That's important. Now let me take my finger off and you'll see that the water rises in that first leg and overshoots, so it rises above water level. Here we go. Bang! Up it comes and bounces down again. Momentum carries it up above water level. So if I do that again, but bring the kink in the tubing right down to water level, the water should go up and over and out. And there it is, siphoning away a self-starting siphon with a bit of help from its friends. That'll continue until the water level drops down to the first leg. Well, let's not let it do that. We'll take that out now, put the water back so the water level's up to the edge again, and look at a self-starting siphon, which is a lot better, because you don't have to put your finger over the end. It's shaped like this. It's very cunning. In fact, it looks very much like the letter M, but the first hill here is slightly lower than the second hill. And it's made of tubing that's not too thin. That's important as well. So letter M, low hill, high hill. And this is what happens. When we lower it in, water climbs up there. It comes roaring over there and has such speed when it gets to the bottom that it comes up and over and out and it starts the siphon itself. At least that's the theory. Let's see what happens. Watch it closely. We lower it in, water level comes up to that first bend, over, down, around and out. And it only just made it. In fact, it wouldn't have if that hill were too tall or the water level weren't right up to the edge there. So it's a pretty tenuous business, but once it's got going, it too will empty the tank until it gets down to the level of the first leg. Well, bending glass like that is not easy, so you can make this yourself out of straws, as long as they are the flexi straw type. That's the sort of straw that has a little concertina kink in it, and you can bend it over and shape it like that. Well, if you want to put one of these into another, and you have to do that about three times for this, this is the simple way. You snip the end, make a little cut about half a centimetre long. That means that you can cross the edges over and make the end a bit narrow, and that will then slip inside the next straw if you're careful. It doesn't make a perfectly airtight tube like that, but you can put sticky tape around it, or push that little kink in and then ram the straw up over. It has to be airtight. You can check it by blowing on one end while you block off the other. That's pretty good. And in fact, what I've done is to make one like that, you can see, here it is, the old classic M shape, that little hill slightly lower than this hill, and it's a fairly wide straw. So let's take this one out, empty the water back in there to get the water level up to the top again, and dunk it in. And with any luck, we'll have a homemade self-starting siphon. Here goes. Curiosity. Curiosity.